A series of events occur at chemical synapses in order to communicate with the adjacent cell. When the action potential arrives at the presynaptic membrane, its depolarization phase opens voltage-gated calcium channels, allowing the inflow of calcium ions from the extracellular fluid. Increased calcium in the cytosol triggers exocytosis of synaptic vesicles carrying neurotransmitter chemicals, releasing them into the synaptic cleft. Neurotransmitters diffuse across the cleft and bind to receptors, often ligand-gated ion channels. Gated channels open, allowing ions to flow according to their concentration gradient. Sodium entering the cell makes the interior slightly more positive. Potassium leaving the cell makes the interior slightly less positive. Depending on which ions enter the postsynaptic cell through the channels, the ionic flow will cause either a graded depolarization or a hyperpolarization of the postsynaptic membrane. Large graded depolarizations tend to generate action potentials. If depolarization is an above threshold voltage, then an action potential will be generated. The neurotransmitters bind to specific ligand-gated ion channels in the postsynaptic membrane. A graded depolarization or hyperpolarization will occur depending upon which channels open to ionic flow. Depolarizations, the result of sodium gates opening, stimulate the generation of action potentials. These depolarizations are known as excitatory postsynaptic membrane potentials or EPSPs. Hyperpolarizations, the result of chlorine or potassium gates opening, inhibit the generation of action potentials. These hyperpolarizations are known as inhibitory postsynaptic membrane potentials or IPSPs. The sum of all IPSPs and EPSPs from all synapses determines whether an action potential will be generated at a neuron's trigger zone.